Hey everybody, this is Rayleigh. Today I'm going to be talking about my ballroom dance in motion photographs. I'm going to be talking about how I came up with the idea and then how I went about taking the photographs. Something that non-artists might not realize is that a major majority of the time spent on a project is spent in the mind. I've let the idea develop, and once I have a tangible idea, there's a lot of mewling over the details. The how, who, where, with what, but also what I want it to look like, and how do I do that. And then the deeper implication. For what purpose, besides my personal fulfillment or enjoyment, am I doing this? Is it for a cause, and what audience will this speak to? The question that only sometimes has relevance is, can I make money from it? It should probably have relevance a little bit more often. This idea began in Tupelo, Mississippi when I was photographing the dance rehearsal for the dance studio's ballet. Um, I was doing it just for fun to experiment and get better. I experimented with long exposures, about two seconds, and I got some pretty cool results. So I did that in other recitals as well. This is one of my favorites because of the rhythm, colors, and background. Fast forward to college, I experimented with long exposures again, but this time it was with antique cameras. That spring in college, I joined the ballroom dance club where I met my husband and really enjoyed the dancing. At some point, I read a blog or article or book that talks about how your other passions can influence your artwork. This was a really exciting thought. Multiple passions coming together. That just sounds wonderful. That sounds like a blast. So how do I merge ballroom with photography? It's easy to merge my other passions like hiking and exploring because I can take my camera along and document the journey. But I'm not sure where the idea I should take long exposures of ballroom dance actually happened. But when it did, it seemed impossible for a while. Meanwhile, I was a ballroom dance instructor for about a month, which was long enough for me to realize that I was going to have to choose between being a photographer and being a dance instructor. That didn't take much thinking about, so I quit. Meanwhile, I met a wonderful group of people there. But the point is, now I knew some models that I could use, but I still didn't have a good location. It's important to know at this stage that you need to be under specific conditions. It's important to have a dark room with an acceptable background that's dark and bright lights that you can move around to modify where the dancers will be. So one day while hanging out in Grodnit, I pitched the idea to my friend Chris, who recommended taking the photos from a theater. Brilliant! but how do I get access to a theater? It took me a few weeks to realize that there is a theater right under my nose, the Wilson Hall Theater at UAH, where I'm a student. So I called Terry from Dance Rocket City to ask her if she'd like to collaborate. She agreed. After a few redirections and complications, David Goodman, the video professor, got me into Wilson Hall. When I walked into the Wilson Hall Theater, I wasn't exactly sure what my camera settings would be. That was both scary and exciting. However, I knew that I had everything else that I needed. The hardest thing for me to find was the location. For these photographs, I needed a really dark area that was also large that also had a dark background. Other things that you need for this kind of shoot is models, in my case ballroom dancers, the right clothes, I used three hot lights, we had music, and a plan. We also had a tripod and a camera, of course. Breaking that down, I needed models, the ballroom dancers. I used Dan and Terry because they were professional dancers, trained and certified in bronze, and they were the right height for each other. I used three hot lights. For those of you who don't know what a hot light is, it's a big strong light that plugs into the wall and gets really hot, hence the name hot light. Music was important because it's important for dance, but also because it helped us synchronize. We could all listen to the beat of the music and 
time everything according to that, which means they would time their dancing to music, of course, and I would time the camera starting the shutter and stopping the shutter to the beat of the music. Something else that was really useful was having a plan, knowing what we were going to do next. That way we didn't have to sit around and be like, um, oh, what are we going to do next? Oh man, we have to change again because we forgot to do that earlier. We also left room for modification. So after each basic of each dance, we decided to do a move, a different move, one that would look good on the camera. And that's one that we collaborated about and talked about together. I'm really glad we did it that way because I'm really happy with the results. One of them would say, oh, oh, what about the reverse turn? Oh, yeah, that would look awesome. So, the camera settings. I shot with a Canon 5D Mark III and a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, and I shot at f22. I did this because they would be moving around the floor, and I wanted them to be in focus at all points. I had a shutter release for the time that allowed me to click to start and then release to stop. So the time was varied. Um, it varied from 2 to 11 seconds, but it was usually somewhere around 5. Since the time and the f-stop were the most important, I set the ISO last, which was 200 most of the time. On one of the moves, it was very quick and short, so I had to increase it a little bit. Or if a movement was really slow, I brought it all the way down to 100. Post-processing. I shot in RAW, so adjusting the brightness and contrast and fixing the white balance was easy peasy. However, the floor that was wooden and painted black had a lot of scuff marks and dirt and scratches on it, so I've done a lot of cloning and darkening it to bring out the movement and the dancers. This reducing of the floor has been one of the most frustrating and time-consuming parts, but it's going to be worth it. You can see the results for yourself, but I'd like to talk a little bit about how I feel about them. First of all, I'm really excited and happy with how they came out. I was so pleased to find out that every dance looked different. I wanted to do this because A, I wanted to mix ballroom dance and photography, B, because it hasn't been done before. While long exposures of ballet is beautiful, it's hard for me to understand because I don't understand the moves that they're doing in ballet. However, I do understand the moves of ballroom dance. And when you know what's going on in the photograph and when you've experienced it yourself, it has more meaning and more weight. There were several times, not several, only one or two, where the dancers kind of tripped on the floor or messed up a little bit and it showed up and it was reassuring to see the accuracy of what we were doing. Some people thought that they would all be the same, that they'd all be blurs of color and light, but that's really not what happened. And that's part of the reason that I'm so excited about it. You get to see the different characteristics of each dance, like waltz compared to tango, waltz and its flowiness and its grace compared to tango which is smooth and strong, you can really see the difference. One of the really exciting parts of this project is that it doesn't stop here. I can keep improving on it, I can keep making adjustments, I can keep experimenting with it, and I can just keep having fun with it. I had a great time shooting this. It was so exciting. Hey everybody, thanks for watching or listening. I hope that you learned something either about ballroom dance or photography. And if you have any questions about any of my other series or photographs, please ask me. I'd love to answer your questions.